and welcome back to the channel. I'm Diane. Today we're going to delve deep into the art of storytelling. Whether you're a writer, speaker, or anyone looking to leave a lasting impression, storytelling is a super important skill to have. In this video, I'll be sharing techniques from Matthew Dix from his book Story Worthy on how he teaches people how to create captivating as well as compelling stories that not only influences but also engages and entertains your audience from start to finish. Matthew is a 53-time Moth Story Slam and 7-time Grand Slam champion, cementing his reputation as one of the great storytellers of our time. So if you want to become a master storyteller or leave a lasting impression at a sales conference or an executive boardroom or a Sunday brunch, stay tuned and let's get started. And if you're new here, my name is Diane and on this channel I provide strategies and tips on healthy living, personal finance, business, and building wealth to help us lead healthier, happier, and freer lives. What is a story? There are three things that make up a story. First, reflecting change over time. Second, your personal story. And third, the dinner table test. A successful story must reflect change over time. It can't just be a series of significant events that happen, but rather you must start with a particular version of yourself and end with a transformed version of yourself. The change can be the main character, the main character's perspective, the plot, the setting. The difference is that there must be a clear difference behind the beginning and the end. A compelling story takes the audience through a journey and shows how things have evolved. It's important to tell your own story, not someone else's. No two people will experience the same events the same way. So it's really important to find the heart of your story and tell it in your own voice. You can still tell someone else's story, but it has to come from your perspective, your side of things. So for an example, you wouldn't be sharing your parents' story, but you'd be sharing your perspective of your parents' story. The dinner table test. So your story must pass the dinner table test. And the dinner table test is a story that you would want to tell your friends over dinner. The story must be authentic. It must connect with the audience and less about performance. In a more professional setting, let's say at a sales conference or an executive boardroom, when you're telling a story, it'd be a slightly more crafted version of the dinner table test that you would be telling to your friends. Basically, you wouldn't be performing, but you'd be telling a story, telling a story to a friend. There are several strategies and techniques to finding stories to tell. You don't need extraordinary events to happen in order to tell a story. And oftentimes these events, these extraordinary things that happen to us and that we think are the best story to tell might not always be the best stories to tell because it's hard to find a connection with your audience because they're kind of one-off events. So some of the best stories to tell are the small moments that happen throughout our days. Homework for life. This involves taking five minutes each day to reflect on the most impactful, most meaningful, and most heartfelt moments of our day. You can simply use an Excel sheet with the date and write a few lines of what those moments were. Over time, you can build a library of stories that you can build upon tiny moments of your life that had some profound meaning that you can start to pull from and not forget. First, last, best, worst. This exercise is to reflect on the highlights of your life and the stories behind them. Take prompts such as kiss, car, pet, trouble, injury, gifts, and travel, and think about the first, last, best, and worst experiences behind each of these. These stories can be personal, professional, or universal, and they serve as a great starting point to finding unique stories to tell. Crafting your story. There are five techniques that he explains to help you craft your story from start to finish. Matthew Dick shares the power of the five second moment. Great stories, whether short or long, centers around this idea of the five second moment that defines someone's life. These five second moments are the focus of our story. And it can be a life changing experience, such as falling in love, discovering something new, finding forgiveness, or a smaller moment of finding acceptance in our lives. People often think stories worth telling are super extraordinary or unique, but often that's not the case. You just need to identify those five seconds that made a significant impact on you. So what is not a story? Visiting Tanzania in and itself is not a story. However, if you had a five second moment in Tanzania that changed you and transformed you to think in a different way or change your perspective, then you might have a story to tell. It's crucial to focus on that five second moment that made a lasting impact or a profound impact on you and less about the location and the setting. Once you've identified the five second moment, you've also found the ending of your story. Your five second moment, which is the most important part of your story, should come as close as possible to the end of your story. When telling real life stories, you always start with the end because you know what happened. You know the who, what, where, when, and why. The five second moment is a starting point to craft your story. 
The challenging part is actually finding the beginning, which requires you to identify and choose the right moments of your life to start from. And there could be many options for that. However, there's a simple way to do this. To determine the start of your story, simply think about your five second moment and the opposite of that five second moment. This is what creates the arc in story, showing change over time. For example, if your story is about being vulnerable and now you feel secure, the start of your story should start in a state of being vulnerable. If your five second moment is about being lost, but now you're found, the start of your story should be about the state of being lost. You create the arc of your story through the change that the story ultimately describes, starting in one place and ending in another. So now you have your ending, your beginning, and you need to craft the middle of your story. And in order to keep your audience engaged throughout your entire story, you need stakes. Stakes are what keeps your audience wanting to hear more. There are five key strategies to keep your audience engaged throughout your story. He calls them the elephant, backpack, breadcrumbs, hourglasses, and crystal ball. Every story must have an elephant. An elephant is the thing that is most noticeable and obvious. It represents the need, the want, the problem that the story is addressing. It gives your audience a reason to listen, and it makes it clear that your story is not just a casual discussion on a subject. Therefore, the elephant should appear in the story as early as possible, ideally within the first minute or the first 30 seconds. A backpack is a strategy that increases the story stakes by increasing the audience anticipation for a future event. So it's when a storyteller loads up the audience with all the storytellers hopes and fears in that moment before the story actually moves forward it attempts to do two things make the audience wonder what will happen next and two make your audience experience the same emotion or something of the same emotion storytellers use breadcrumbs when they want to hint at a future event but keep the audience guessing and on their toes there comes a time when you reach a moment that the audience has been waiting for and the sentence your audience has been waiting to hear this is the moment to use hourglass it's time to slow down and grind on for a bit. When you know that your audience is hanging on to every word, let them hang and drag out as long as possible. Crystal balls are one of the easiest strategies to deploy. It's a false prediction made by a storyteller to cause the audience to wonder if the prediction will prove to be true. A great storyteller creates a movie in the minds of their audience. Whether the audience is a theater full of storytelling fans, a boardroom filled with potential clients, or a classroom, the goal of every storyteller should be to create a cinematic experience in the minds of their listener. Listeners should be able to see the story in their minds at all times. And in order to do this, storytellers must do one thing. They must always provide a physical location for every moment in their story. That's it. If your audience can always picture the location of your action, then you've created a movie in the minds of your listeners. The key is not to perform your story. The key is to tell your story. Don't memorize your story. Memorize only three parts of the story. First, the first few sentences, start strong. Second, the last few sentences, end strong. And third, remember the scenes of your stories. I'd recommend this book to anybody who wants to become a more powerful speaker as well as influencer. Storytelling is one of the most powerful skills to have. If you like this video, check out my other videos where I talk about business, management, and building wealth. Thanks and see you again.